الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of the Ummah, the owner of Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated, whoever writes Salat with my name in any book, the angels keep making dua of forgiveness for him until my name remains in that book. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madhuri channel Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal We are glad to welcome you back into our silsila again Where we are discussing some aspects of the blessed life of Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullahi Ali And in the last episode we looked at some of his akhlaqiyat, some of his qualities in terms of his good character that he possessed and today moving on we will have a look at Sina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah's journey towards knowledge how it started and we will inshallah azawajal, through the blessing of Sina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Ali we will try to persuade ourselves to seek knowledge Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It is stated that Sayyidina Ghazi Azam rahmatullah alayhi During, he states that during my childhood I was walking towards the jungle So I started to follow, follow a bull or an ox A bull, so I was behind this bull And as I was walking this bull turned around and he said to me, O oh, Abdul Qadir, ma li hadha khulifta? You weren't created for this. So, Sina Ghazi Azam rahmatullah alayhi says, I started to panic. And I went back to my house, I climbed onto the roof of my house. And I looked from the roof of my house, he says, and I saw people standing and gathered in the, uh, in the place of Arafat. He says, I went to my blessed mother, and I asked her, I requested in her court that, Oh my mother, gift me in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. And give me permission, grant me permission so that I can travel to Baghdad. And there what will I do? I will seek knowledge, I will seek ilm and I will, have, I will be blessed with seeing the pious and salihin, the pious people. And when she asked me the reason as to why I wanted to travel, I mentioned to her the incident of the bull that had taken place. And when she heard this, tears came into her blessed eyes. And she brought 80 dinars, 80 coins, which my blessed father had left uh, as inheritance. And I took 40 out of those. And I left 40 for my brother. And then she, he says that she stitched those coins under my armpit in, 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 the clo in my clothing and she granted me permission to go to Baghdad. And in fact, she instructed me strictly to speak the truth and always speak the truth. And then she told me, Ya Waladi, idhab, O my son, go. Indeed, I have departed from you I have sent you in the way of Allah for the pleasure of Allah And this face of yours now I will not see it till the day of judgment So she is permanently bidding farewell to her son at this, at this point 
and Sidna Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi when he was now on his way to Baghdad keep in mind his journey, his journey from now on is purely for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal in order to seek knowledge, religious knowledge that is and when he was traveling towards Baghdad with his caravan when they got to a place a bit further from Hamdan they, the caravan that they were traveling with it was attacked by a gang of robbers mugs that, that rob people on the way and they started to take the possessions of everybody but they ignored Sina Ghazi Azam because he was considered a child or he, uh, so he wasn't expected to have any belongings on him and then one of the robbers asked Sina Ghazi Azam that what do you have? do you have something? and he replied yes he said what do you have? he told him 40 dinar and the robber asked him, asked him, where, where are they? And he said, they are stitched under my armpits. And the robber, considering this some sort of a joke, he thought that Sayyidina he wasn't really serious, he wasn't telling the truth, truth, he just went. And another robber came, he asked the same thing, do you have anything? He says, yes, I do. What do you have? 40 dinar. Where are they? They are stitched here. So, this second robber, he also took this, he did not take this seriously, he didn't take any notice of this. At the end when the robbers gathered together, now these robbers, they reported Sina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah to their leader, saying, so and so young man, is there, and he claims to have 40 dinar upon him, on, on himself. So, the gang leader now called Sina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah and addressed him the same way, what do you have? He says, I have 40 dinar. And then the, he asked, where, where are they? He told them exactly where they were. And when they searched, they actually found those 40 coins, those 40 dinar. And the robbers, they were shocked. And the gang leader, when he realized he was telling the truth, he was so shocked and he says to him, that what convinced you to speak the truth? You knew that they were well hidden and well concealed. And you could have gotten away with it. We would not have taken these from you. We would not have found them unless you pointed them out. Unless you told us where they were. You could have gotten away with it. What made you speak the truth? And he, Rahmatullah Ali, he says, The advice of my mother. Subhanallah. And the gang leader, he says, What advice is that? What is that advice that persuaded you to speak the truth? And he says that my mother stressed and instructed me to always speak the truth and I had promised her. I have promised her. When I, before I left, I promised her that I will speak the truth. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. This speech of Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah at such a young age had such a deep impact on the gang leader and that this person, this young child he is not turning away from the promise that he has made to his mother. He is not turning away from the promise that he has made to his mother. Whereas I have, be, I have turned away from the promise of my Lord. I have turned away. From, I've, I've spent that the whole of my life turning away from the Lord, promise of my Lord. Subhanallah. And this brought guilt in his heart. It made him. It, it brought a revolution in his heart. And at that time, instantly, the gang leader, along with all of his companions, all the robbers, all 60, they all repented in the blessed hand of Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah They took their tawbah and they, 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 they carried out their repentance and they returned all the belongings of this qafila, of the caravan, to the people. And from this parable, from this incident, we can pick up many 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 pearls and Shaykh Muhammad Qaid Rahmatullah he states that once I asked Sayyidina Ghazi Azza Rahmatullah I asked him a few things and one of them one of those things was that I asked him you have such a great status what became the reason for that what led 
to you having such a great status and he rahmatullah alayhi he says that truthfulness is the root cause and is the base and is the reason for the for the amount for the greatness and all the status that i have achieved subhanallah azza wa jalla and he says i have never spoken any lie i have never said anything that's a lie i have never spoken a lie to the extent that when i used to study in the madrasa at a young age even during that time i never said anything that was a lie i never said a lie subhanallah azza wa jalla and in terms of knowledge sina ghazi azam rahmatullah alayhi he was asked as to how he became a qutb how he gained this status as a wali how he gained the status of qutbiyat and he rahmatullah alayhi he says darastu al-ilma hatta sirtu qutba i studied knowledge until i became a qutb subhanallah azza wa jal sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so alhamdulillah azza wa jal this was the beginning of the journey of sina wa sayyid rahmatullah alayhi towards ilm towards knowledge and there are many blessings of knowledge rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has stated the wording the summary of a hadith whoever walks upon a path in which he is seeking knowledge allah azza wa jal through the means of that will make the path a, a path towards heaven easy for him subhanallah azza wa jal and if we look at the blessings of knowledge now Sina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi When he is travelling, he is travelling for a very deep amount of knowledge And that's For us Even if We cannot go and travel for example And do a full Alim course, a Dars Nizami course We should strive to gain at least the Fard Uloom At least the Fard Uloom, the Uloom the, the amount of knowledge that is Necessary and compulsory upon us As individuals to know so that is the knowledge of our salah that is the knowledge of our wudu that is the knowledge of how to purify ourselves when we are in the state of impurity and alhamdulillah so the more knowledge increases in a person the more his amal his action increases when we found out, find out the blessings that something carries we are more inclined towards it and then when we seek knowledge and we learn regarding the punishment of not doing something of missing salah for example we are then encouraged when we see the reward of do, doing it and when we see the punishments for missing it we are encouraged to carry it out how does this come about through knowledge through knowledge so we need to make efforts to seek knowledge and subhanallah azza wa jalla it is stated in a hadith whoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends goodness with he grants him an understanding of religion of the religious knowledge subhanallah azza wa jalla so we have a choice in this world we can either chase the respect and the money of this world which we will leave maybe after 60 or 80 years of our life along with everything in this world that we have we obtain or we can try to strive for the hereafter and when we look at the hadith mubarak regarding the blessings of knowledge and the amount of uh, the respect and the status of the ulama ikram it is apparent how much status they hold when somebody gains knowledge the benefits of knowledge remain even after one's death it is stated in a hadith when a man dies his acts come to an end but three his acts come to an end all his actions are ended but three continue recurring charity sadqa jariya second is knowledge by which people benefited knowledge by which people benefit and the third is a pious son who prays for him three things so a person continues to benefit from knowledge even after his death and if we look at the examples of such examples we find within the Islam, within the muslim scholars alhamdulillah azza wa jal even if we do not go far, too far back we see say the ala hazrat ali rahma such a great amount of work that he that he penned down that he wrote that he authored the books that he wrote down and all of these books are widely used even today especially his his famous work fatawa radwiya sharif 
any mufti who is giving a fatwa at some point will have to refer to fatwa of the Sharif. So we see the blessings of knowledge. This is the knowledge that people are benefiting even when these scholars have departed from this mortal world. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is stated in a hadith that if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Allah Azza wa will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. The angels will lower their wings in their great pleasure with the one who seeks knowledge. The inhabitants of the heavens and the earth and the fish in the deep water will ask forgiveness for the learned man, for the scholar. The superiority of the learned man over the worshipper, of an alim over an abid, is like that of the moon on the night when it is full over the rest of the stars. Subhanallah Azza wa And the scholars are the heirs of the prophets. And the prophets leave neither dinar nor dirham. They leave only knowledge behind. And he who takes it has taken a big fortune. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani has stated, during my days as a student, after receiving the lesson from my teachers, I would go towards the jungle. And wherever, I, whether it was day or night, whether it was storms, whether it was raining, whether it was hot or cold, I will continue my mutala and my study. I will continue to study. And this was in the jungles, in the places which were deserted, where there wasn't anybody around. Subhanallah azawajal. And at that time, he says, I used to have one small imama upon my head, and I would have very little to eat. It stated regarding Sayyidina he used to speak when he used to deliver his speeches. He would speak with and include 13 different sciences in that. Muhaqqiq Abdul Haq Mahdi Zalwi writes that Sayyidina Ghazi Azam in one of his gatherings, a person once recited an ayah of the Quran, a verse of the Quran. And Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Firstly, he mentioned one tafsir, one commentary and explanation for that verse that was recited. Then he mentioned another, then he mentioned a third one. To the extent he carried on and carried on and he mentioned 11, 11 possible explanations for that verse. And then from there onwards, he carried on and he mentioned 40 further possibilities. After 11, he mentioned 40 more possibilities that could be. 40 possible explanations and tafasir for that same verse, for that one single verse, 40 different tafasir, and with each tafsir, each meaning, and each explanation that he gave, he gave solid proof for that. He gave solid proof for that explanation that he was given. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. To the extent that Muhaddith Ibn Jawzi Rahmatullah Alayhi, even he was so impressed, and he says that I knew the first 11. The first 11 that Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi, he met the, the first 11 tafasir and the explanations that Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi gave, I knew those, but the next 40 that he gave, I had no knowledge of those beforehand. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. And when, when we hear about, when we hear this regarding Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi, us as the followers of Sayyidina Ghazi Azam Rahmatullah Alayhi, we must also strive. We must also strive and continue to reform ourselves and continue to seek knowledge of religion. May Allah Azawajal grant us the ability to remember, act upon and pass on to others what has been said. Ameen bijahil nabil Ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Missing Blessing Blessings of us, say us.